Hello YouTube. It's time for a mechanics rant. Uh, I've actually recorded a few videos over the last couple of months and uh, I may go through them. They're on my phone. I just haven't had a chance. It's been so busy to edit them and then to figure out how I'm going to upload them with my crappy ISP. Anyway, today I was working in the shop and the issue that's come up uh, quite a few times, well obviously my whole career, but recently it sort of reared its ugly head once again today, and it's a pet peeve that, of mine when it comes to automotive manufacturers. Oftentimes when mechanics are dealing with the repair on modern vehicles, the complaint is that, uh, you know, they're, they're not engineered very well when it comes to replacing certain components and that sort of thing. It's very, very crowded as the cars seem to get smaller and have a lot more... Uh, technical uh, technological advancements so they have more um, paraphernalia if you will more componentry around it's just more and more difficult to service them and mechanics complain about the engineers I've always been a little bit more I don't know what understanding about that because I understand that the poor engineers they have a lot of masters you know they're they're on the hook to uh, to meet price you know requirements a uh, cost efficiency actually obviously technic technical efficiency aesthetics and and ergonomics and all these different things the environment you know vehicles run through many different types of environments and so they've got a lot of masters service after the fact mechanics after you know working on these products after the fact not really high i don't think on their list of uh of of you know bosses right people that they need to uh, to cater to. And I kind of understand that. But what does get me, and, and actually another one is planned obsolescence. I think there's less planned obsolescence than people might think. Unfortunately, I think it might be a little more of a case of uh, reinventing the wheel quite often for the sake of reinventing the wheel. People justifying their positions by coming up with a new mousetrap and throwing away technology that actually worked quite well. And so often I don't think it's planned obsolescence so much as it is accidental obsolescence, a poor design and poor execution. But one thing that really does bother me is when an automotive manufacturer does have a defect in their vehicles and they attempt to uh, take advantage of that. Now granted there are many forced recalls where a manufacturer has produced a vehicle that's determined to have a defect that relates to safety and the NHTSA or other governing body uh, mandates a recall at the manufacturer's expense where they have to fix all the vehicles that are affected by that defect and that can cost them greatly I mean it's a I think it's a good pressure to have on the automotive manufacturers that they're going to be held accountable for those things and often I think a lot of it has to do with just this reinventing of the wheel again but there are also a lot of defects in the vehicle manufacturer that don't relate to safety and are not covered by a mandatory recall. And these can range from engine problems, um, power steering problems, and other problems where it's not reached the level of being a recall, but um, it's something that is going to require a fix. And what ends up happening quite often is the manufacturer will come up with a repair and then they will charge an exorbitant amount for the parts to affect that repair. I'm not going to name any manufacturer's names here because I don't really feel like dealing with any of that kind of hot water. But I had a couple recently that really illustrated this point. I had a vehicle with a power steering pump failure and the initial power steering pump that's available in the aftermarket was roughly $150 Canadian. And uh, there's also an option through the original equipment manufacturer to replace the power steering pump. However, because of some defects that they had uh, uncovered in the original power steering pump, there's a new power steering pump design. This consists of a mandatory three parts to make it work. The power steering pump itself, a new reservoir, and a new bracket. The aggregate of these parts, if you add them together, comes to over $1,300 Canadian. I think it was around $1,344. And again, this is in comparison to $140, $150 part available in the aftermarket, which is, of course, of the old design. So the option is to throw this old design part back in there, which is known to have an issue, or upgrade to the new design part 
uh, to the tune of a whole heck of a lot of uh, a whole heck of a lot more. And I just see this as pretty blatant, I think, pretty blatant attempt on the manufacturer's part to capitalize on a defect. I've seen this before with faulty fuel pumps, uh, and and this was quite obvious because the original fuel pump that had an issue was uh, somewhere around the $500 mark. And then when they discovered an issue with the fuel pump, they made a new one to correct that fault, basically corrected their mistake and charged $850 for the new one. And today's example of this, and, and I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, wow, I wish I could make, you know, that much, make such good money off my own fuck ups. Like, how do I, how do I capitalize on that? Like these guys do. Not that I would, of course. Uh, another vehicle, a Japanese manufacturer, has an issue with cold starting problems and misfires. And they've determined that too much manufacturing tolerances exist in their camshaft sensors. They have four of them, two for the exhaust camshafts and two for the intake camshafts. And so they've developed a procedure to test and, and do some depth measurements and determine the actual gap between the sensor and the reluctor that it reads off of and determine if that air gap is too small and if it is too small they sell some very tiny metal shims to increase the distance between the sensor and the reluctor that it reads off of. Now keep in mind these are very very thin wafer thin shims. It comes in a package of eight ranging from one um, one one hundredth of a millimeter sorry one tenth of a millimeter up to eight tenths of a millimeter. This little pack of shims, they're basically egg-shaped. They, they're egg-shaped with a small hole on the small end of the egg and a larger hole on the other end. And they're only going to be um, something along the, the lines of an inch to an inch and a quarter in, in length, measured the long way. So these are very tiny metal shims. Uh, the package does, does weigh but nothing. And they charge $180 Canadian for a pack of eight shims to crep to correct their own malfa uh, manufacturing malfunction, their own manufacturing tolerance issue. And of course, if you read through the bulletin that uh, alerts the dealers and anyone else to this issue and provides the part numbers, they also provide the time that they allow for the dealerships to inspect, measure, and this includes hooking up a, an oscilloscope to measure the crankshaft and the camshaft waveforms to compare them and make sure that it needs further diagnosis and then measuring all these shims and then installing the correct shims in the correct places and they allow a whopping one half of an hour to their dealership personnel to perform this which I have done the procedure and I can tell you it cannot be done in a half an hour it I think you'd be hard-pressed to do it in double that if you had done several of them. It's probably going to take me around an hour and a half total time to do this one. It'll probably be a one-off. I doubt I'll see another one. Um, and so this is interesting because of course the part, the parts charge, the $180 is what they're getting, but what they're giving to their own dealers is a whopping half of an hour to fix their own manufacturing uh, problems. So just something that's always bothered me and I think it's shady. I think it's fraudulent behavior to reap in the rewards like that of your own manufacturing defects. Let me know what you think below. Thanks for watching.